Hi. Today, we're in this video, we're going to concentrate on just a couple of short topics in Chapter 4. Uh, I, I hope you've printed out the handout again. Every time you review one of my videos, you should have my, my handout in front of you. Sometimes I refer to it, or sometimes I'll give you an example that is an additional example. But today, um, I would like to you to have pull out your chapter four handout, and we're going to discuss a stem and leaf plot. So here's your handout, and here's a step. This is a stem and leaf plot. What we've done is every data point we've separated in two parts: a stem and a leaf. Okay, so for example, data point 88, data point 88, the first eight is here and the second eight is here. The next data point was 89, so it would be in the same um, class as this first one, so this is 89. We do that with our entire data set, this is also in your book. And we've actually created a histogram on the edge. So it has all the advantages of a histogram, except we don't lose the actual data. In fact, if I showed this in a presentation, you should be able to tell me, for example, what is my minimum data point? My minimum data point here would be 88. What's my maximum data point? Well, if I look down here, it's 156. I can also, from a stem and leaf plot, just like a histogram, give you total sample size. How would I do that? To calculate sample size, I would just calculate or count the number of data points in the leaf section. In this case, there are 45 data points. Okay, so it, the stem and leaf plot has all the advantages of a histogram. In addition, you don't lose what the actual data points are. Okay, the next topic I'd like to go over in Chapter 4 is your core tiles. And I'm going to put a blank piece of paper because I'm going to give you an example that you do not have. I recommend before you review this video, is to go through my PowerPoints and understand quartiles and percentiles a little bit. But we're, I'm going to give you seven data points, 18, 20, and I'm going to range them least to greatest. You have to do that for quartiles, 22, 24, 24, and 26. I'm going to, this is my data, and I'm going to assign them locating points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so quartiles or percentiles. The first data point I want to calculate is I want to find the first quartile. It is also the 25 percentile. First quartile and the uh, 25 percentile are the exact points. We are going to locate it from the formula that I gave you in my PowerPoint presentation. It's n plus 1 times the percent over 100. Well, in this case, it's 25%, and n is 7. So 7 plus 1, 25 over 100 and we get an even 2.0. This, again, is locating it. So data point two is my first quartile which is my 25 percentile which is 20. Okay, let's see if we can find our third quartile, which corresponds to my 75 percentile. So we're going to locate it. 7 plus 1 
This time, 75, we're looking for the 75 percentile. And it's in location 6. So here's location 6. So it's my third quartile or my 75 percentile is 24. The last one I'd like to go over is the most important is your second quartile or your 50 percentile, which is also your median, your middle data point. Let's locate it. 7 plus 1, again, sample size. It's your 50 percentile, which it locates in position 4. Where is position 4? Right here. So our second quartile or 50 percentile or median is 22 in this example. <laughs>